before she was the first Trinidadian woman elected to the House of Representatives, before she was the first female minister, before she was the first woman to serve as an ambassador for Trinidad and Tobago, she was Isabel Ursula Cadogan. Isabel was simple, looking, but dynamic in her approach to all things about women and the party particularly. In one way, I would see she was an outstanding woman. Parliamentary personalities, a lady of firsts, Isabel Ursula Cadogan Tishi. Born on July 24, 1911 in Princess Town, Isabel Ursula Cadogan Tishi became a pupil teacher almost immediately after primary school. There have been no opportunities locally for females to pursue secondary education. Isabel established herself early on as an organized, helpful individual, immersing herself in the formation of youth groups, debates, concerts, and dances. Isabel also discovered her love for social work while employed at the estate and became heavily involved with helping the needy and participating in the charitable works of St. Stephen's Anglican Church. She the kind of person she was. She got all the women to work and to feel that they could make a contribution. Just before the middle of the century, Isabel's marriage to Roy Tichy gave her the opportunity to move to Port of Spain, where she would make her mark as a lady of power and distinction. In the very early years, when she moved from Princess Town into Port of Spain South, at that time she lived at Clifton Street and she became very active with the women of the area. This is how I met her, because she formed a group called Women's Voluntary Service and I happened to be secretary of that group. She was very much interested in women and always found that the women did not participate in the events of the country sufficiently, so she tried to educate them. This is how I met her. Her role in the group was as teacher, advisor, helper. She taught certain subjects, such like helping, which helped to empower women, and she encouraged them to participate in various classes which were held at the center. At that time, the center was at St. Paul Street. She was indeed very, very much interested in the women of the area. The first group which she organized, Women's Voluntary Service. That was the motto, each one teach one. And we participated in this aspect of each one teach one because members of the group taught members what they did not know. For instance, in that group, I did floral arrangement, I did cake icing, and quite a number of crafts which were taught by other members of the group. So she actually started with each one teach one and she continued it right into her political career. Having already discovered her passion and talent for making a difference in others' lives and her masterful organizational skills, Isabel became involved with a relatively young political party, the People's National Movement, or PNM, formed in 1955. She mobilized the women in particular into taking an active role in the decision-making process and was a founding member of the PNM Women's League. By 1956, Isabel had been elected chairman of the Women's League, which would set her on a path to accomplish her legacy of firsts. Isabel was very, what should I say, competent, but dynamic. She didn't show off. She, whatever she had to do, she did it quietly. But she did it in such a way that people followed what she said and was always eager to please. I think that Isabel helped women in this country to come out. She did an excellent job in managing the Women's League. And in managing the Women's League, she taught the women that they had a contribution to make to Trinidad and Tobago you know, at, no, at any level, whatever. And I think that that was something that has done very well for the country. Having established herself as the woman to go to to get things done, 
Isabel gained the respect of the party's founder, Dr. Eric Williams, and her peers. She introduced me to Eric Williams even before the party was organized. I was one of those who did research work for him so that he can start the party as such. Isabel Tiche also worked with Dr. Williams when he spoke in Woodford Square and had a team of persons doing a lot of research work for his uh, speeches, which many people are not aware of. They thought the speeches given by Dr. Williams was solely his academic undertaking. She was elected first lady vice chairman in 1956, a post she managed to balance skillfully alongside her commitments to the Women's League. And in 1961, she became parliamentary secretary to the Minister of Local Government and Community Development. Isabel Tiche was very dynamic in the PNM from its uh, previous name of the Political Education Group. Some people mix that up with the uh, People's Education Movement, but it was called the Political Education Group, which was formed in 1955 and with the inaugural conference in 1956 on the 15th of January, formed itself into the People's National Movement when she, Isabel Tiche, was um, made the chairman of the Women's League Committee and also would have served as the Lady Vice Chairman of the People's National Movement. Well, this Women's League Committee eventually formed itself into the Women's League in May of that year, 1956. Uh, Isabel Tiche didn't really, as such, then aspire to be a frontline politician as her work was more social work and also women's rights and, and elevating the status of women. But Isabel continued to set her personal standards for achievement higher with each accomplishment. She served successfully as Minister of Health and Housing from 1963 to 1967 and moved on to become Minister of Housing from 1967 to 1970. Dr. Williams saw that uh, she should go beyond that level. And in 1961, after the holding of the general elections on the 4th of December, she was made parliamentary secretary in the Ministry of Community Development. And uh, I believe the other portfolio in that ministry, uh, I can't offhand remember, but in the Ministry of Community Development, again, because of her community work. Subsequently, two years later, 1963, she was made full-fledged cabinet minister, minister of um, health and housing. That portfolio has been very, very challenging back then and still is as we know. And she was given those two challenging portfolios, not individually, but combined. So uh, Dr. Williams saw, I guess, the, the vibrancy in the woman and that she would be able to undertake the uh, management and operations of the, those two ministries efficiently. Having established a new role for the women of Trinidad and Tobago, Isabel set her sights on the international landscape and how she could impact the global perception of her twin island republic. She was not interested in to, to say the Negro woman as such. She was interested in all women. That is why she was actually participating in the Federation of Women's Groups and Women's Institute. And in addition to that, that was not the only group that she was interested in, but there were quite a number of groups that she organized in different areas. Being a woman and being interested in women, she felt that she was a pace setter. She was setting the pace for women to follow. In 1970, Isabel accepted the post of ambassador to Ethiopia, another first, and served as a high commissioner to Guyana from 1974 until her retirement in 1977 at the age of 66. Isabel Tiche was made, as I had said, Minister of um, Health and Housing in 1963, holding on to that combined portfolio until 1967. So even though there was a general elections in 1966, she was reappointed to that portfolio and served until 1967. She continued though, but separately now, as Minister of Housing from 1967 to 1970 when she was appointed the year before uh, as uh, ambassador to Ethiopia. Also, Isabel Tiche was the first in being the first female elected member to the House of Representatives in 1961 when with constitutional changes 
uh, that came about with the holding of the elections on the 4th of December 1961 that uh, the House of, well, we had a bicameral legislature that was established and Isabel Tiche was made, um, well, elected to be the first member of the House of Representatives. However, one must not confuse that with two previous women who were not elected but were appointed to our legislature, which was then called the Legislative Council. That would have been Audrey Lane Jeffers in 1946, and the following year, 1947, would have been Georgina Beckles, who was also appointed to the Legislative Council. So they preceded Isabel Tiche, but as appointed members, but in terms of being elected members, or elected member, Isabel Tisha was the first elected member to the House of Representatives in 1961 and upon uh, attaining independence a few months later, on the 31st of August 1962, that, how, that bicameral legislature was then called Parliament. Her accomplishments were lauded across the region and she was posthumously awarded the Trinity Cross for public service shortly after her death in 1981. Isabel Tiche thereafter her health waned and uh, didn't live too much longer, died four years later in, 1990, in 1981. What is of interest there, she and Dr. Williams were born in the same year of 1911, Hers being, her birthday being uh, 24th of July and Dr. Williams actually uh, 25th of September of that year. Dr. Williams also died in the same year as she died in 1981. She died on the 14th of uh, April, and Dr. Williams died two weeks before that, on the 29th of March, 1981. Her funeral took place uh, four days later, privately for the family members, and then there was a national memorial service that was held three days later, on the 21st of, um, of April, at the Cathedral of the Immaculate Conception in Port of Spain, at, by the Woodford Square. She was dynamic but humble she worked without people knowing how hard she worked and i think that the contribution she made she didn't even think that it was as important as it was i think that the Women's League and the PNM owed a lot to Isabel and her attitude. She saw good in every woman. She saw everybody being able to make a contribution. And she thought that every woman was important to the party. If Isabel Tiche was alive today, she would continue to say, love your party and do good for your country. She was a standard bearer. She was a leader. She was one who was greatly in, influential in the people of Port of Spain South. And she has left a legacy in Trinidad and Tobago, along with Audrey Jeffers and uh, one or two others as well, on uh, the elevation of women's uh, status in Trinidad and Tobago, and also in um, her contribution to the People's National Movement which has been, as I said, a force to be reckoned with because of her vibrancy in that organization. First woman in the House of Representatives. First female minister. First female ambassador. Isabel Ursula Cadogan Tishi, truly the first woman of Trinidad and Tobago.